was, like a second Job, a man simple and upright, altogether fearing the Lord God and departing from evil. He was a simple man, without any crook or craft or untruth. He was both upright and just, always keeping to the straight line of justice in his acts. He was chaste and pure from the beginning of his days. Against that pest of avarice, with which so many are infected and diseased, even princes of the earth, this King Henry was most wary and alert. Of the patience of this king, and his most kind compassion, which he showed throughout all his life to them that sinned against him, many things may be related with all truth. But what need of more? It is certain that the men among whom and towards whom the king was so kind and merciful proved at the last wholly ungrateful to him. For whereas God's right hand had raised him to so glorious a place, these, conspiring together with savage rage, deprived even this most merciful king of his royal power, and drove him from his realm and governance. And after a long time spent in hiding, in secret places wherein for safety's sake he was forced to keep close, he was found and taken, brought as a traitor and criminal to London, and imprisoned in the tower there, where, like a true follower of Christ, he patiently endured hunger, thirst, mockings, derisions, abuse, and many other hardships, and finally suffered a violent death of the body that others might possess the kingdom. But his soul, we piously believe, liveth with God in the heavenly places, where after the trouble of this world he rejoiceth with the just in the eternal contemplation of God, and in the stead of this earthly and transitory kingdom, whereof he patiently bore the loss, he now possesseth one that endureth for ever. Let us pray. Almighty God, King of all kings, author of all wisdom, we magnify thy holy name for that thou didst endue thy servant, King Henry VI, with a deep longing for thy courts and a most liberal mind towards such as loved good learning. And we beseech thee that the colleges which he established may serve continually his royal design for the profiting of virtuous science and true religion. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Henry was of liberal mind. He had good learning in great reverence, and loved them who were endowed therewithal. For he founded a sumptuous school at Eton, a town next to Windsor, in which he placed a college of priests and children in great number, there to be brought up and taught their grammar freely and without cost. The same man was also founder of the King's College at Cambridge, which so flourishes at this day with the ornaments of learning that it may be called the Prince of all Colleges.